Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome to another Mac 84 live stream. I am back. I have power. Yay. <laughs> I'm Steve. Welcome to the stream. Uh, first off, if uh, you want to make sure, let me know if the audio sounds good, if the video looks good. Uh, this is my first time back for a while, so thank you for, <laughs> for being patient there. Uh, we have a bunch of people in the chat here. Holy moly. All right. Audio video is good. Thank you very much, Jay. And let me pop the chat out over here. I should have done that before. And uh, there we go. Oh, hello, Bruce. Hello, Jay. Hello, Tom Tom Computing. Uh, hello, Aaron. Hello, Scarlet Swordfish. Hello, Trina. Hello, Sean. Hello, Christian. Let's scroll up. Oh, my goodness. There's more. There's more. Hello, Zombie Geek 33. Uh, hello, Distro Hopper 39B. Josh. And Nick. Hello. Hello, hello. <laughs> Where you made an X serve thing, yes. <laughs> Smash that like button. I can't do that as, as well as you can, Bruce. But, uh... <laughs> oh, boy. And, and, yeah, I need a haircut, so the hat's covering up the bad hair. What's, what's left of it? Hey, Brian! Awesome, 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 awesome. Okay, so, we're going to get right into it today. So, <laughs> big thumbs up! All right, so, um... I had no power for almost, well... A long time. It was a few days. And uh, it seemed like it was forever. So, yeah. Of course, of course. The Macintosh SE is always in front of the monitor. So, uh, <laughs> I don't think that's going to happen, Trina. <laughs> Some requirements for that that are not yet met. All right. So, um, if you recall, I did a few streams uh, after I visited the e-waste facility this past summer. Uh, so, now in May, June, I uh, went to an e-waste facility, got some compact Macs. Um, I did a stream where I opened up a handful of them, but there's still a lot more to open up. And uh, it's going to be fun because I need to find where I put the tools to open them up. Uh, I do have a new screwdriver set, so I can always just go grab that upstairs. But um, I don't know, you know what's wrong with them. A lot of them were just turned on really briefly. Maybe it was a bad logic board or whatever. They put a sticker on it. Uh, the individuals working there were, were pretty tech savvy, so I trust if they say it was a bad logic board, the caps are probably leaked. Uh, we did open one Mac Classic a while back, and the battery just exploded all over the board. I think I have that board right here. Yes, I do. And uh, just goes to show you. Now, this has been cleaned by the ultrasonic cleaner a number of times. And you could just see that this is still in extremely rough shape. Well, first off, uh, so the question is, what do I plan to do with all these Macs? Well, uh, one, I plan to open them up and see what condition they're in, see if any parts are salvageable from them. Uh, if possible try to repair them. I think this is pretty much a parts board, uh, unfortunately, due to uh, some of the, the very, very pretty corrosion there. I mean, some of these tracers are just gone. So parts for chips and other stuff like that, this will be a good salvage board. Um, but once I uh, fix some of them up, potentially I could sell them or trade them uh, or potentially just keep them for parts, especially since I'm starting to recap other boards and stuff like that for, for clients or, or friends and what have you. Um, that is that is something that uh, I can do. I could try and repair them, of course, Jay. But uh, yeah, I don't think a lot of them will be uh, <laughs> will be. Uh, well, for example, Jay, trying to repair something like this. Yes, theoretically, it could be done. I guess, but is it worth it? Probably not. So, yeah, with the amount of rust on that processor, I'd be. I, I would probably sink way too many hours into this. Probably more hours than I sunk into the Quadra Eight Forty AV. I'm very jealous that Bruce got his working, although it's not his, it's for a client, I understand, but very jealous on that. But kudos to you, Bruce. That's that's good. Um, I don't know, Jay, this looks pretty bad, like that uh, LC you pulled apart, but anyway, I digress. So, I have a Macintosh SE here, but it's not actually uh, an SE. So this is actually an SE30, and uh, a friend of mine sent this along to have me recap it, and... Uh, uh, this is uh, the Macintosh Librarian's SE30, and she has an awesome channel. I suggest you go check that out on YouTube. Just search Macintosh Librarian. She has some great videos there. Um, and uh, this machine did not work uh, when they originally tried to turn it on, so I gave it a recap, and it works fine. So I'm happy to report that. Another successful Macintosh saved. Just catching up on the chat here. Oh, very nice. Uh, you got an iBook Indigo. Very cool. Very nice. 
Apple Talk 50 Compact Max. That is something I, I will likely be doing at one point in time. I don't know if I have 50 of them. Probably have about 20, 25, something like that. Um, but I, but I, can, I, can, I can Apple Talk a lot of them, so that'll be good. Uh, I like your uh, little icon there, backup battery. Very nice. So uh, let me just turn this on real quick. Uh, if I find a power button, a uh, power cord. Ah, uh, that's not one. There. It is. Yeah, still, still getting used to this focus because I'm not used to power. Okay, thank you, Brian. Brian's gonna come to the rescue here. He's gonna, he's gonna come over <laughs> with the remainder. We need to get to 50. We'll get this thing up to 88 miles per hour. If you had 84 max, though, that would be insane. I have over 84 max. Don't put ideas in my head. <laughs> All right, let's plug this in. And let's plug in our SCSI 2SD adapter. Oh, I got a bunch of Apple Talk cables, too. That'll be fun. Yeah, I have a 475. I have one that the battery exploded on, unfortunately. I have a Quadro 605. I believe they're very, very similar. Just a rebrand. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we both stopped counting. It's probably for the best. All right, let's uh, plug in this SCSI cable here. So when this thing turns on, it has something to boot from. All right, cool. So just leave that like that. And uh, bring the camera a little closer. Well, you don't need to see me. You need to see the computer. There we go. And we're going to turn this, this lovely thing on without me electrocuting myself. How about that? Didn't chime that time. That's weird. Huh. Oh, you know what? I, this might not be the SE30 board. We'll find out in a second. I can't remember, honestly. I was swapping around a bunch of SE boards because I have a few that I have to test also. And I need to plug the keyboard in, which I uh, forgot to do. See, I'm rusty. You, you don't do this for a little bit and uh, take some out of you. Now this, this one's having a little bit of a weird issue where it um, it's making some some sort of uh, noises. You might be able to hear it. It's not the hard drive making the noise. The speaker is picking up some type of interference or something. As Bruce says, don't do what I'm doing. You're, I'm not plugging in a an ADB uh, connector in while the machine is on? No, no, no. I would never think of it. Uh, I did recap this one, but this has not gone through the ultrasonic cleaner. It could be just some residue causing some issues, but I did not get a chance to put it in the cleaner yet. <laughs> No, 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 Jay. That is an optical illusion. Your eyes must be playing tricks on you. Yes, yeah, so... Yeah, this version of the OS doesn't specify what machine it is, but this is a Macintosh SE 30. And it does work. We will need to give it a good cleaning, though. And I'm curious if any of you have ever experienced that same issue. So the issue I'm talking about is... Whenever the hard drive is being accessed, there's a uh, high-pitched squealing noise coming from the speaker. And uh, we have some other Macintosh SEs to look at today, so I'm sure this is not going to be the only, only one that does that. But. Oh boy, more chat stuff. <laughs> uh, let's see. Da -da 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 -da. You are just buying up all the Macs in the area, aren't you, Nick? Yes, it is good to see a boot. 33 in your room. Very, very nice, Brian. Well done. <laughs> oh. Well, don't blame me for that, Nick. <laughs> well, I'm not, I'm not touching anything. Uh, <laughs> I'm not touching anything around the CRT right now. So I, I'm in a, a pretty good spot. You know, you, you don't want to do anything foolish but uh, I do had I did have this propped up where I didn't have to put the board all the way back in because I was swapping this board out 
and another board out. So it is it is kind of hanging in there just a little bit. There we go. So I want to make sure we don't touch any of the things. What I really want to do, and I'm sure someone much smarter than I has, has done this before, I really want to just make an extension cable for this analog board plug. You know, just so it makes it much easier to test these boards, unplug them, plug them back in. Ah, yes, don't forget the Pippin. Don't forget the Pippin. Because some of these can be very difficult to, to unplug. You gotta, you know, wiggle around and, and get that clip out of there. And even if you get that clip, you gotta sort of pry that connector off. And you wanna make sure the speaker cable is uh, disconnected also. All right. So this, oh no, this actually is a SE board. This is not the SE30. I was mistaken. The SE30 board is by the ultrasonic cleaner. Waiting, waiting to get it clean. See, I'm out of it for like a week and everything's all disjointed for me. But this is my SE board, as you can see. Uh, so I actually clipped the battery there. This one had the battery uh, soldered into place. And yeah, the plus, the plus is a little bit hard to, a lot of them are, are a little tricky to disconnect. It would be great just to have an extension cable and just use that. I, I, I could probably just get the, the connector, the male and the female connector online and, and rig one up myself. That might be good. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's just, what how many we have here? We have three, six, seven, yeah, there's just 14 cables there. So that if I could find the connector, I'd be happy to do that. Three good batteries. I am jealous. Hey, Sean, welcome to the party. Action Retro. Yes, at least, it, well, the plus, the plus, at least the one I remember opening up, d does sort of have a latch connector. It's, it's sort of, the, the but it's on the uh, socket itself, not the plug. So. All right, so uh, I'm going to put this down because we have other machines that I have not touched yet that we're going to be looking at. And that, those are the Mystery Max. So let me be very careful in moving this. We know we have a good analog board. We know we have a good CRT and a good floppy drive and everything in this one. So I'll be moving this over here, off camera, if I have space, maybe, 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 there we go, okay, cool, running out of space, but what else is new, what else is new, all right, so the next machine we're going to bring out here. Uh, this is one I got from the e-waste facility, so I've I've never turned it on before. What are we doing with these old caps here? I'm not crazy. I don't save old caps. I only save old batteries. That's that's another story. I'm gonna toss those out. So this one, ah, how could how could I say no to this little guy? So Brian may remember this one. Ugh. So uh, this actually uh, was one of the working ones, but it has severe screen burn in. The sticker says screen burning and no boot disk so uh, the hard drive is probably dead this thing looks dusty on the outside let's get a look in on this because uh, oh boy yeah, this has seen some better days unfortunately it is quite dirty and uh, got some paint on it and stuff yeah this is there's velcro here there must have been like maybe at one point another one had this too but on all four sides one of those glare protectors or something yes there's no there's no clown paint i don't know if it's caked we will open it up and see uh we have a, a vintage apple computer sticker with the old font on there so that is a pretty neat little addition to this computer uh and we have another one on the side but a much newer apple sticker so <laughs> yeah a webcam yeah <laughs> Well, we could put a webcam in here. I have, a, I have a quick take. There we go. So just comparing the old fonts there. Uh, there's uh, some type of apparatus here for either holding uh, a page for you to read or some type of security thing. Who knows? I did not pay $80 for this. <laughs> who do you think I am? Someone who doesn't haggle? No, I picked up the remainder of the Macs from the e-waste place. I think I think they went for... After, after you take into account the entire mess of money I spent at that place. I think that the ones I took at the end, I think they were around 12 to $13 each or something ridiculous like that. So for that money, that's fine just for a case or for parts or for cables. Oh, hello, Andrew. Hello, Nicholas. Welcome. Welcome to uh, 
you're you're watching from your living room, I assume. But hello, Nicholas. Hope you uh, get some knowledge out of this. You need to know about these old 1990s Macs in your in your school. That's something very very important for a young to learn. So this one is dusty and dirty. Look how dirty this is. Ugh. Oh, hello Shay and Stella as well. Of course, I get I get I'm getting requests now to say to everybody. Yes, Nicholas is your fan, Jay from the House of Moth. Now, now I'm gonna have to repeat that about a billion times during this video. But yes, he's the one that that won't stop uh, saying your channel name. So you got some good promotion going on there. Very good promotion around the schoolyard. All right, so oh, we got a sticker on here. Hold on. Property of the Children's Art Carnival, 62 Hamilton Terrace, New York City. Uh oh. I think I better return this. Do you think they want it back? <laughs> I don't. I don't think. I don't think they're gonna want this back. <laughs> let, me, let me get a, a zoom on that sticker. That's pretty cool. I said Stella and Shay. Hello, Stella and Shay. Wait. Hello. Ah. <laughs> you missed it. All right. So there's that sticker. If the, if the camera wants to focus, any time now. You can focus any time now, Mr. Camera. Come on. Maybe. 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 Oh, come on. If only I had some control panel of settings. <laughs> the screaming at you is very good. That's a very, very, very good thing to have. Let me open up this convoluted control panel that I have to manually click on and then open and then go to the tab that adjusts the focus and then adjust the focus manually, which I can't seem to select now. Oh, this is fun. Oh, there we go. Focus auto off. There we go. All to just to see that sticker. I hope it was worth it. I hope it was worth it. But yes. Computer number 247 or property number 247. Very interesting. Very much worth the time, of course. Of course. Alrighty. So, what we're going to do is we're going to... Well, let me turn this on. Let's see what happens. If it blows up, it blows up. Hopefully not. I don't want it to blow up. But the, the CRT is very much uh, burned in here. So, that's going to be fun. Uh, we'll plug our SCSI to SD adapter in there so we could at least try and boot off of something. Ugh. Yes, the smoke test, TomTom Tom Computing. Well, let's hope there's no smoke here because I, I just I just got started. I don't want to. We don't want to have to end the stream yet and call the fire department. I will not be calling the number on the back of this computer. It's probably been relocated a number of different times, and it's probably some old lady's place. You're not going to be bothering her at 9.20 p.m. on a Sunday. Right, so, uh, I have, uh, I, I'm going to guess that this machine uh, was tested because it does say it has burn-in and it says there was no boot disk. So I'm going to assume that does turn on, so that would not surprise me. Uh, what would, su would surprise me if, if the hard drive works. I don't think the hard drive works. But place your bets. What do you think? You think it'll turn on? What do you think, Nicholas, Shay, Stella? Do you think the computer will turn on? I don't know. I don't know. We will find out. We will find out. No, let's not hope it blows up, please. Uh, I, I could I could use not going to the hospital this week. That would that would be very nice. All right. Let's plug this in. Helps if the switch is off before we plug it in. I've learned my lesson. <laughs> All right, so we have some yeses and some noes. Let's see. So I'm gonna I'm gonna back my chair up appropriately. So if this does catch on fire, at least I'm not in the line of sight here. All right, three, two, one. All right, we got a we got a chime, and the screen's coming on. Oh, that is some good burning at the top. So there's some image retention. So some images permanently burned into that little black and white display, which is sad. It almost read, they had a WordPerfect doc or a, or a Microsoft Word doc or something open. Oh, that's terrible. Hello, Dana. Welcome to the chat. Oh, that's a fuzzy CRT. Oh yeah, that's uh, that's, oh, I have to stop this. <laughs> this is loading things into RAM disk. This thing might not have enough RAM to do that. All right, uh, about this finder, 
four megabytes of memory. How about that? So the hard drive is toast. We are booting off of an external disk here. But um, let's see. Screen is a bit wobbly. But who could blame it? This thing has probably been abused and sitting on a shelf for far too long. Let's just uh, see if the speaker works pretty well. We like to open up a game of Tetris to do that. Let's bring the camera closer. So this area here is not a floppy drive. Uh, that is actually an indicator for the hard drive. Or hard drove. However you want to pronounce it. <laughs> we, are, we are going to start the game. Alright, no screaming, please. Uh, that's right, you have to use the number pad. Oh, come on, two in a row? This doesn't have a grid, so I'm... I'm this is a risk. Oh, there we go. No, a square. All right, well, it works. That's all I need to know. Awesome. All right, so we don't have to do too much for this, although I'm going to open it up just to see if the hard drive is still in there. Let's turn this off. Uh, no, this has this booted off of a SCSI 2SD adapter. So that was uh, this little plug here with an SD card in there. So booted externally. No fancy magic required. All right. Now comes the fun part of finding the screwdriver to open up the computer. That's going to be fun. I knew where it was before my power went out, but not after. You're going to be hearing a lot of that today, because that's an awesome excuse. That's an excellent excuse. It was here, and then the power went out. I just, oh, here it is. See, look. How about that? So this this is a uh, Torx 15 screw bit, and uh, <laughs> daddy typed something. And Andrew, this is actually, this was shipped to your address years ago, and I forgot. Yeah, so... There you go. That was that was a fun, a fun thing for a while. Um, I didn't know where this was, and I found it. So, yeah. What I will do is uh, open the thing up. Uh, there, it does not boot to the in internal hard drive. So we're going to find out why it does that, or why it doesn't do that. Maybe someone took the drive out. Maybe the drive's dead. Maybe the drive is just uh, a little bit, a little bit sad. Yes, this is a. Uh, Little Mackie from the Macintosh Librarians channel. He's a little cute guy, isn't he? And uh, we fixed his friend, so I'm gonna sit over here. I, I would doubt it's unplugged, but you never know. You really don't. I have no idea. I'm guessing, but I'm gonna open this up. Oh, that doesn't turn. How about that? All right, <laughs> we need another screwdriver. I tried to use the the one that doesn't doesn't fit. How silly of me. Oh, okay. Where am I? Where am I going to find a screwdriver that fits the thing? Oh boy. Well, okay. We'll we'll try and get her a little Mac. <laughs> just don't just don't wedge it between the couches cushions and and lose it like you did the Nintendo Switch controller, please. I'm sure that wasn't you, but somebody had to do it. Oh, no, that's too small. Oh boy, where did the screwdriver go? Wait, hold on. See, I bought these little containers to put tools in, <laughs> and they're empty. Uh, I I had a plan, and I didn't follow through on the plan. And now I'm just talking to myself, which which just makes me look more crazy. Uh, screwdriver, screwdriver. It's uh, one of those things. Yes, I think I think Jay's missing tweezers are here, and then my screwdriver went to Jay's. I think they, they had sort of a mutual swap. 
All right. All right. Wait. Maybe. Yeah. There we. Uh, maybe. That. Uh, does that fit? No, that does not fit. Yeah. All right. Um, the hunt continues. Just mind me a moment. Let me get up and see if it's over here on the other side of the room. Probably is. Maybe. Oh, the Nintendo Switch controller was in the bed. That's a perfect place for it. Perfect place. All right. Um, yeah, I need I need one that has the uh, spot to put in all the different bits in. I do have one, but it's it's for the smaller bits. Uh, yeah. Fun. Fun times. <laughs> Some Tetris hater, yes. No, we all like Tetris here, hopefully. Hopefully. Uh, Alright, I'll actually be right back. Let me go upstairs. Uh, let me grab the screwdriver. I will be right back. I promise. I promise I will be right back. Okay, all right, we found a screwdriver. Yay! It was somewhere. I knew it was somewhere. All right. Somebody just likes pushing buttons. I personally don't care. All right, let's get this working now. So we have our screwdriver, and we have the bit that is long enough to reach in the holes of this compact Mac. I disliked and reported. What? Okay. Anyway, what we're going to do is open up this machine here. And we're going to see what we got. Right. All right. So these screws are more fun to get out. Yes, I actually do have a Mac cracker. It's one of those devices that uh, sort of like an opposite of a of a uh, words escaping me at the moment. It's sort of like a wedge. <laughs> yeah, so we have a Macintosh SE here. Uh, here we go. 
Yeah, you know what? I, I wasn't... I wasn't happy about... Uh, about the... Um, whatchamacallit? The... Um, the CRT is too much in this. But the thing is... You know, they're pretty fun. I like them. Uh, I'm not too happy about messing around with uh, analog technology, which is, you know, high-voltage CRTs and such, but whatever. So it's, a, it's a, a way of life if you're going to mess with these old machines. All right. So these screws should come out. There we go. Whoops. Flying out. You're guessing it has dead bugs in it. Well, let's hope not. Let's hope. That, well, I'd rather have dead bugs than alive bugs. How about that? How about that? All right. So we just turned this on. So we do have to be very careful and not touch anything stupid. All right. And <laughs> yes, the old Mac OS has many bugs. Yes, it does. All right. So we're gonna we're gonna try and open this. So I like to do is I like to press my nails here and push the plastic here. Ooh, that's uh, pretty nasty, Nick. No, oh, thank you. Uh, and uh, usually these are pretty easy to open. You just push. Of course, I jinxed it now. You push the bottom open so this sort of separates, and then you you push the top. Oh, this one's actually coming across pretty good. There we go. Just like that. Oh yes, this does need a clean. The plastic thingy on the side. Which side? This? This is a, a trackball mouse, if that's what you're asking. Guitar pick. Yes, I could have used a guitar pick, I guess. Alright. So let's uh Let's open this thing up. See what's inside. Okay, we got some dust. Plenty of dust. Um, it's actually pretty clean inside, to be honest. I mean, it is dusty. There's a little oxidization on some of the metal. Um, inside of the case is okay. Not bad. Uh, oh yeah, this, uh, I don't know what that thing is. <laughs> Security lock, uh, document holder, whatever you want to guess. Alright, so we have a hard drive. So the hard drive is there, just probably doesn't work. Uh, there's a lot of dust on this board. A lot. I mean a lot. Um, that flyback transformer has a glue on it that is a nice healthy brown. Look at that. Um, yeah. So yeah, we have the hard drive. We we have there's a ton of dust in there. Uh, I'm I can't see the PRAM battery yet, but we're gonna remove the board and uh, remove that battery. Hopefully, it uh, has not done anything old, uh, anything bad. Uh, let's see if there's a date on the back of this. Uh, no date on this one. Copyright eighty six, but. This could have been sold a bit later. Uh, I will uh, send off the serial number to my friend Jay, who has a serial number website. Jay, if you want to plug that in the chat, you're welcome to do so. Yes, don't worry, we will be taking out that battery. So I'm going to lay this machine down on its face carefully. And oh, the metal shield uh, stuck. That's okay. A little bit of dust there. But actually, this board looks pretty clean. On, on this side, at least. I don't, I don't know about the other side. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So first things first is removing the cables that we could reach very carefully without touching any of the CRT, especially the neck. We don't want to snap that off and break the poor CRT. Even though, even though it's uh, it's burned in, it's still useful. Yeah, the hard drive could have a lot of issues. Stuck platter, uh, circuit board bad, bad cable, overheated, blah blah blah. Uh, I'm probably not going to mess around with it now because I don't, I don't have a Mac that's set up for me to just image SCSI stuff just yet. 
Uh, I do have one, but it stopped working. It, it's, uh, it was my Power Mac G4, and it decided to go into an infinite loop of booting and getting stuck. So, fun. So I'll have to spend some time to, to get that. Uh, when did I buy a Mac, and what was your first one? Well, I didn't buy a Mac. Uh, the first one I had was a family computer. It was Macintosh 2CX. And I had that when I was a kid. I always had. It was something I was always aware of it being there. So, yes, there was a period of time where I didn't have it, but that was the first one. Um, what is my end game with my huge collection? That's a very good question. I have absolutely no idea. <laughs> uh, I, do like, I do like collecting a lot of these machines, especially the ones I, I don't have or I think that are interesting. Um, I, I don't really see the need to have so many duplicates as long as the ones I have are working and I have some spare parts. But that being said, some of the prices for these things are just stupid. They're just very stupid prices. Very, very high prices for things that are very weird. And uh, I would not imagine any of these, these things being worth a lot. Then you have people who are buying broken machines for hundreds and sometimes even thousands of dollars. And that makes no sense to me. But uh, who am I? I don't know. Um, uh, no, I did not hear the hard drive spinning at all. So maybe something was stuck or maybe the motor's bad or something. Uh, over a hundred... I'm going to say a safe bet is over 160. That does include laptops, does include machines that doesn't work, stuff like that. Does include all-in-one machines, stuff like that. So, an iMac G4 for $20 is not a bad deal at all. Especially if the screen's in good condition. And this is what I hate about the <laughs> these plugs here. So there's this plug, for those of you who don't know. There's this plug here. There we go. The, the brain cord, the whatever cord you want to call it. That, that transfers all the data and information from the logic board there to the analog video circuitry here and the power and all that stuff. So that's what we're trying to get out there. <laughs> yeah, I would not pay anywhere near $700 for a Grayscale PowerBook Duo 210. Maybe if it was a 280? Might be worth some money. A 210. No, thank you. All right. We're going to try and get this cable out here as, as neatly as possible. You have to sort of pull this clip up. And then I'm just... I can see the connector wiggling free now, so... I am very jealous, Ben. <laughs> I had a 270 seat. Well, I still have it. The screen is cracked, unfortunately. I never managed to get one before the prices of these old things skyrocketed. But very nice machine. I always wanted a 550C. I do have a 540C. All right. Cable is loose. Now to look for the speaker cable, which I always forget and then rip out, and that's not a good thing. All right. Let's not do any comparisons here. It'll take all night. No verses, please. Let's keep it civil. There we go. I'm just doing a shortcut here, just letting this come out a little easier. There we go. That battery is still intact, although there is tons of dust on the board here. Look how dusty that is. Ugh. Ugh. No worries, Brian. Uh, I'm sure I'll be giving you some spare parts soon. Mmm, <laughs> dusty dust. Yeah, let's get that battery out. Snip, snip. Let's do that before before anybody has a crazy reaction here. All right, let's uh, get our snips out. Snip, snip. All right, this is a Varta battery. Let's see. Order number 6126, 3 volt, half AA. Made in West Germany. Look, Dana. <laughs> we have batching batteries now. <laughs> Dana had a battery that he removed that said made in West Germany. <laughs> so now I have one too. This is, this is a keeper. That's a keeper. Yeah, let's, let's see the voltage on that thing. Let's grab the multimeter. Dana, Dana and I belong to a very exclusive club. His, 
<laughs> he has a battery that's from West Germany, and now I do too. How about that? Hold on. I'm trying to do this correctly here. Wait, is that? What am I doing here? What am I doing? Yeah, the battery on my multimeter is uh, is weak, so not be able to test the voltage right now. Maybe if I get bored, but I I'm pretty sure this is dead. <laughs> pretty sure, pretty sure it's dead. Let's see if there's a date on this. Uh, Eleven eighty eight. So November eighty eight is either the nineteen eighty eight is either the expiration or the build of the battery. Probably the I don't know. What what was the date on the back of this machine? Uh, eighty six. So. Hmm. Yeah, Aaron, the CRTs on those iMacs get very toasty over time. Uh, could be a flyback transformer issue. Could be a capacitor issue. Uh, my mult. Well, here, let me try the multimeter again. It's been acting a little weird. So I turned it on. Now nothing is on the screen. Turn it on again. Now we got something. Uh, all right. Remind me of which position I put the dial to test voltages for batteries, because I do not recall. I do not recall. <laughs> 666, yes, that's the battery voltage. <laughs> Current setting should be fine, alright. It, it just likes displaying the sixes, that's all. Uh, not, not shown anything. Nothing is changing on the dial, so. It's still reading 0. 0.666. <laughs> oh, well. I'm assuming that's a dead battery. <laughs> this meter, this meter has gone to live with the devil because it came from a, uh, a cheap place, I'm sure. That's, oh, that's weird. <laughs> All right, well, we got the battery off, and what's fun about that is you can see that's the clean part of the board, and then the rest of it is dusty. Look at that. Ooh. Ooh. As president, my first uh, uh, executive order will be to remove PRAM batteries from all vintage computers. <sighs> oh, boy. All right, yeah, this, this is a very dusty board. Uh, I will be putting it back in the machine, but I'm going to make notes on this machine, uh, and uh, uh, we'll probably re revisit it another day, because I do have other Macs to crack open. I see some dead bugs in here. They are not alive. They are dead. That's good. But, yeah, it's a dusty board. But it did work, so that's good. We have four megabytes of memory. So, what I'm going to do is we're going to turn on this other machine, if I can find the wireless keyboard. Buried buried under everything else and we're going to print out a little status label because the second I put this cover back on and put it on the shelf I'm going to forget which machine it goes to <laughs> oh that's right we got a power outage all the Macs turned off except this G4 one how did that stay on I guess that was set to reboot after power failure uh yeah so once once I uh, dust this off uh, I might do an ultrasonic cleaning of it I don't see any corrosion, really. I mean, these these don't have uh, the uh, electrolytic caps that you normally see uh, on the uh, you know the classic and the classic two, you know, the silver caps and stuff. Let's see. Very cool. Yes, I will refer to today's stream. That's a very good idea, Jay. Very good idea. All right, so let's find the mouse for this computer. An old Kensington mouse in the box. And we're going to open up our label creator. We're going to make sure our label maker is plugged into power, which it currently isn't. That would sort of make things hard to work, right? Oh, boy. We're at batting a thousand today. Where's the thing? Where'd the thing go? Uh, 
Where'd that power cord go? Ah. Nope, that's not it. <laughs> oh boy. Oh boy. That monkey is going to pay. Um, it's around here somewhere. Oh, here it is. There we are. Ooh, nice spark when I plug that in. Of course, that wasn't on camera. Of course not. Why should it be? All right. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Jay could be, uh, Jay could be the one to put in Bruce's very, very helpful recap of Mac page, which is, is actually where I got, uh, where I got these lovely printouts. This is for a Macintosh Classic 2. This is a recap guide, so it gives you the capacitors that you have to replace, the values, and their location. Hard to screw it up when you have this, although I managed to place a cap in the wrong spot and I put it back, but... Uh, very, very handy. Bruce's guides on recapamac.com.au is very, very useful. And uh, I would highly recommend anybody who's looking to do any recapping on these vintage computers, go and check out those guides. They are free, and you could go check them out. For anybody just joining, we are tinkering around with some compact Macs that I got from the eWaste place earlier in the summer. And we're just popping them open. Uh, what I'm doing right now is putting a label... Oop, <laughs> I'm glad that was there. Uh, putting a label on this machine and uh we will be we will be moving on to the next one shortly there we go bruce has to bruce has to t put in his own links in the chat what, what sorcery is this where's where's the magical helper all right that's, that's, uh, this, this is this is this is this is just showing you the madness that is my desk this is how i'm typing and doing the mouse <laughs> this is sort of sort of crossed here that is not ideal anyway let's get on to it uh Let's me save a new label here. If I could type, uh, and I'm going to just put some information here about this machine. So I have to put a text box here. This software isn't the best, but it's the only one that works with this label printer. So, all right. Uh, I believe Bruce does have a video. If it's not for the Mac Plus, it's for a similar computer. He may, though. He may. <laughs> Multitasking, yes. All right, so let's put in, uh, this is a Macintosh SE boots with SCSI to SD. Uh, screen has burn-in, battery removed, very dusty. And today is August 9th. All right. No, not all USB PCI cards are Mac compatible. Most of them just tend to be because they use the same chipset that Apple eventually used or they accidentally had drivers for it, but not all of them are. Not all of them are. All right, let me adjust this text box just so I could print that out. All right, so just apologies. Let me just finish typing this up here. Thank you everybody for uh, joining Golden Panda. Hello. All right, let's see. Uh, this is a uh, computer. Computer notes. This is August 9, 2020. And we live streamed at about 9.50 PM. All right, this is Macintosh SE. Very dusty. All right. All right. All right, so we can print out this label. Print. So we got this label. I'm going to be cutting the label in half. I can always make a handwritten note on the other one. And we will be putting this on the case of the computer here. It already has its fair share of stickers. So what's one more? And I will put this uh, just on the top here. Easy for me to see. Actually, you know what? Let's 
It's all dusty and dirty anyway, doesn't matter. Put it on the back here. So there we go. We got a sticker on there. We know what this machine's deal is. Now let's put that board back and we'll grab another one off the shelf. So we're only it only took us an hour to look at one machine. I say that's progress. And if I leave this board out, I will just lose it in the sea of other boards that I have. I just wanted to show you the amount of dust on this board. Look at that. I just cleaned that area where it says Apple computer with the uh, with the sticker there. Ugh. Look at that. Uh, I have not tried retro writing yet. I am of the same belief as Bruce that my first and foremost goal is to get these machines in working condition and to prevent them from being killed by the capacitor damage and battery leakage that kills so many of these machines. Uh, after that, you know, if there is something I want to improve, if the, the machine is in overall good condition, I might consider recapping it. It is not something I've done before. It is not something I'm against. Uh, it is certainly something that I think is is a nice to have. There are some machines that I have are very yellowed, especially monitors, that I would love to have recapped. I just have never done it. Uh, I think I'll do it in the future, but uh, I have no immediate plans to do that. I think my main goal is to recap all of my machines that are, are uh, at risk of uh, going bye-bye. And, uh, yeah. Oh. Yes, dust is a fire hazard. So is grain. All right, so let's put this shell back on here. Oh, we forgot the... Uh, forgot this guy. Hangs on the back of the ports there. There we go. Oh, come on. Perfect. All right. So, our little Macintosh SE does work. Did I even say it works? No, I did not. <laughs> I basically wrote everything about the machine, except that it boots. All right. There we go. All right. So, this one is good. Let me just get up and move this to the other side of the room and I will grab our next victim. I mean, next patient. Okay, so that Mac did have a price tag of it of uh, $80. I did not pay $80 for that. I would feel bad about anybody paying $80 for that. Very bad. Because that has a horrible screen. But yes, my desk is an absolute mess. But it's a, it's a workbench. So what do you expect? Next up, next up for bids is this wonderfully... Wonderfully uh, written on all over. There's writing all over this machine a Macintosh classic. So here's a Macintosh classic Let's see what we could describe or transcribe Some of the writings on here Looks like an AOL screen name or something uh, Ewan McGregor <laughs> Wait Ewan so, No, not McGregor, but Ewan Mc, McGuy some some name is fine and then somebody says so is Mike and then some initial so somebody was fine apparently and someone said one four three I love you I it's a bunch of gibberish ah good old school computers so this is a Macintosh classic manufacture date September 1990 uh, quite a good amount of dust on here let's uh, let's get some of that away Forgot to do that with the other one but Yes, uh, this one was rattling a little bit. 
Which it makes me fear that uh, maybe the battery has uh, decided to explode itself. Who knows? I'm certainly not going to turn this one on. I'm going to open it up first. Because there are no notes on this one. Uh, making me do work here, huh, Greg? Uh, do, 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 do. Don't know what you're referring to, sir. But uh, I'll check it later. All right. No, we do not smoke computers. We let them. We let them be what they be. I have a very old iPhone 8. That's my gut. Still works. Happy with it. I don't believe there is a way to get rid of burn it. That is a reaction of the same image being pressed, uh, not pressed, but being beamed from the, the uh, electron gun onto the coating of the glass inside of the CRT. If there's a way to rejuvenate that, it probably involves taking the whole CRT neck off, putting that coating back in there, and doing the whole remanufacture process of I guess making a CRT all over again. So I don't think us mere mortals can do that without an expensive factory that they probably do not make the uh, make the equipment for anymore. But what do I know? That's just that's just me. Yeah, for for image retention on on LCDs, depending on the model, sometimes you can get rid of that, but. Yeah, take your bets on the status of the PRAM battery inside of here. Yes, I did see his video. Um, not anything, anything I I, uh, I uh, plan to do anytime soon, but it's fun to watch those videos. I just realized I, I left the screws off of the other Mac. That's okay. Nothing special about these. Two silver screws on top, two black screws on the bottom. Really? <laughs> the top ones came out no problem. The bottom ones are are the ones that uh, need some suggestion here. Oh, I guess GT one to show off his clean desk. Well, thank you. All right, there we go. <laughs> Be free, battery. Be free. All right. Let's hope this is not as stubborn as the other Macintosh SE I opened, which was hard to separate. Now we almost got 40 people viewing. We have 39 viewers. Hello, everybody. Oh, look at that. Oh, oh the top is uh, not going to be friendly to us here, is it? Well, the bottom... Hello, Yannick. Welcome to the stream. Hello, everybody else I, I may have missed. Sorry. My eyes have been uh, a little busy on this little Macintosh Classic we're trying to open here. <laughs> I like that. A casserole of nonsense. Well, there was some tape here at one point. Yes, all the screws are out. Well, let's double check there's no screw here. I don't think there is on the Classic. I don't believe so. I think that's only on the, uh, the Plus, right? Yeah, I'm going to probably break this thing opening up. No, this is not the battery cover. This is the CRT adjustment cover. And yeah, there's no screws there. No screws there. Nonsense lasagna. That's even more. I'm going to end up breaking this. I'm just going to put that to the side. We don't need that. We don't need any break in here. All right, we're going to uh, we're gonna stand up. And there go my knees. And uh, we're going to gently suggest that this Macintosh split itself open, please. Please. There we go. That's one side. That's the other. All right. This is a uh, moment of truth, fellas. There we go. All right. Actually, it looks very, very clean inside. 
<laughs> the Bruce method usually works, and when it does work, it works 100% of the time. It actually doesn't look too bad. Let's uh, take a closer look at this. There's no rush, no rust. Ugh, can't even speak. Uh, the analog board looks pretty clean. There's some dust there. CRT looks in uh, good condition. That's a Clinton Electronics Corporation brand CRT. And we have uh, any dates on there? No, but we have the manufactured date, which is good. Uh, we have a hard drive in there, which may or may not work. We have a floppy drive plugged in. We have some caps that um, will definitely need to be replaced, but I can't see any uh, suspect stuff on there just yet. But we will be getting to that battery. We will be getting to that. Let's put this back on here. <laughs> Yeah, this is, this is, I, I'm wondering why this was, I don't know, uh, maybe this, uh, maybe this one uh, does work, who knows. But we're going to take a look uh, before we boot it up, how about that. Alright, so, take out the SCSI cable here. Uh, the expansion card here allows you to put in more memory. So there is some memory here, I believe that's memory. Yes, 256K times 4. So we have memory here, and then we have two slots here. And we have a little jumper that you could say if memory is installed or not. So this goes into a slot here. So uh, although the board does not have any memory on it, this does. Oh, we have a Maxell time bomb in there. The clock is ticking. No, this, this board will not fit into a Classic 2 or anything else. No SE, no plus, or anything. That board is specifically for this computer, although it looks like the board that can plug into a Classic 2. If we look at a Classic 2 board, ah, which is right here, uh, you will see that there are two extra rows of pins. So this, this board cannot actually go into that slot, although it looks very much like it. Now, this is a very clean Macintosh 2 board that I recapped. Uh, this is Mike's from... Mac Shack, uh, Mike's Mac Shack and Mac Yak. I recapped uh, this logic board for him and it works beautifully. Very beautifully. So this is a very, very clean Macintosh 2, uh, Macintosh Classic 2 logic board. All right. And yeah, so we'll put that to the side here. And all right, let's try and get this video cable out of here without breaking anything else huh there we go these boards just slide out and that battery is in good shape but we will be removing it we do not want to risk anything like that so battery has been removed it's a Maxell super lithium battery one of those time bombs that everyone always talks about and uh, let's see if there's any dates on here Uh, 1990, July 1990. Okay, so uh, I believe the case said this was manufactured September, so that's probably the creation date, maybe, of this battery. So, oh yes, the 2SI is much faster than the Classic, much faster. Uh, let's do a test. I will see if my multimeter wants to cooperate here. I really need to get one of those auto-ranging ones. That'll be nice. This is just a cheapo one. Nothing fancy about it, but it does work. Uh, again, it's just stuck in the 666 range of things. Uh, do I have this on the wrong setting? No. Well, I'll fuss with that later. Oh, change the setting to 20 volts. Will do. So now it says 6.66. Nope. Not... <laughs> Not doing anything. Still saying on uh, on that 6.66, but we'll, we'll come back to that later. <laughs> the devil's multimeter. It's saying my batteries are haunted. All right, so I'm curious why this machine... Uh, maybe this was one of the ones that you had to actually pay for. Uh, not the, the broken one. Because this one doesn't have a sticker on it. Uh, as far as I could see. Let's check... Nope. No sticker on it. So. 
I'm buffering over there. Well, I do have uh, a green connection here, so apologies if uh, I was buffering. But uh, I'm going to blame it on the YouTube, as all good streamers do. They just blame their platform of choice. So I will blame YouTube. Sorry. Uh, I only have... Uh... Oh, yeah, there were some drop frames there. I don't know what's happening, but uh, hopefully that sorts itself out. I will... I will move very slowly and talk slowly so you don't miss anything. Have you ever ridden a bicycle? All right, enough of that. Um, this board looks pretty clean, actually. Pretty clean. Uh, there is there is some some stuff. Uh, around these caps though that uh, are a little suspect a little sus as Bruce would say um, but overall it actually doesn't look too bad there's there's not there's not your standard collection of dust around these caps there's a little bit but it's really not too bad so yes we're streaming at a blazing 144 progressive resolution excellent excellent sorry I can't control it Everything looks green on my end. YouTube is retaliating for whatever reason. Oh, we got we got some dust there. Ew. Ew. <laughs> oh, look at that. Yeah. That's um that that's 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 a lot of dead bugs. There's a lot of dead bugs in there. No thank you. Get rid of that. All right. Collector's dust. This is collector's dust. Is that a premium? You pay a premium price for this collector's dust. I don't want to see any any low balls here. This is collector's dust right here. Ooh, what the heck is? Oh my. Well, okay. I think I found the problem with this machine. Who wants to guess what the problem is? Who wants to? Who wants to guess what the? What the problem is, is there, there might be a problem with this, this wire here in the center top pin. It's a little green. It's, it's a little bit green. Oh, come on. Delicious. And I there was a little bubble here. There was a little bubble here. I thought it was from me spitting as I talked, but there might have been some moisture. Because that is a little bit green in there. Oh, that's going to be fun. It doesn't look like it burned. It looks like there's, like, liquid. I, I'm going to gonna have to uh, investigate this. Where's my scrapey-de-scrape and pokey -de poke tools? Oh, boy. There we go. I will be happy to do that, Bruce. Yeah, there is uh, definitely some crud on here. I can't get to it, but this cable... Ugh, this cable, I think, is has the worst of it. Yeah, probably too much humidity. Uh, we will we will get this uh, get this clean, but it is not golden appearance inside of that connector. And, it, and, and I'm sorry that... Uh, this is uh, looking so bad. I'm actually not going to turn it on, Nick. I, I am. Uh, this this is uh, very much crispy inside of there, and it looks like it's just to a ground cable because it's black. Although although I could be wrong there. Um, this cable uh, is on this machine is soldered to the analog board. That's okay though. Uh, I could always put a new connector on, and you know what? If I'm looking for an extension cable to build. Probably end up ordering one of these connectors anyway. It does look like pretty a standard cable, so uh, yeah, burnt, burnt, delicious green. Mmm, 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 delicious, delicious. Oh, that's very nice of you, Brian. That'll be that'll be good to have a spare analog board. But yes, let's. Uh, we didn't turn. We're not going to turn this one on because this this needs some some help here. I'm going to write my findings. Well, let's let's open the uh, 
the side panel for the analog board here so we can have a look. Well, thank you, Yannick. That's very kind of you. It seems that everybody has a few spare parts that they don't really know what to do with, but overall, this machine looks pretty clean. What I will do is try not to lose all these little plastic uh, holders. Well, how do I do this again? Oh boy. Yeah, YouTube is being YouTube again. Lovely, huh? Oh, how do I do this? I think I push the little pin and just this this is not the tool I should be using for it's the the one I have right now. Ah, oh, come on. Oh, do I just squeeze the end of it? I'll poke the middle. All right. Well, that might be a bad one to start on. I can hardly even see what I'm looking at here. Yeah, that one looks a little bit different from that, so maybe that... I'm not going to get hurt. Don't worry. Bzz, ah! I blame the viewers. I did this on the other. Oh, that I see what's going on. There, all right. Now I now I now I remember. Yeah, I'm just trying to remove that middle wedge. It's, it's not really giving me much to to grab on, unfortunately. Yeah, that is not giving me too much to grab on, but Bruce wants to see it. We're going to get into it. I, I have removed one of these before, back when I was young and smart. Oh, yeah, I, I got a bunch of drop frames there. Well, there is, there is iffy power in my community here, so... Um, could very well be a, an internet issue locally, but, um, I don't know. So unfortunately there's, there's not really anything I could do at the moment. So my apologies if, uh, if I keep buffering like Max Headroom over here, but, uh, I don't think I'm going to be able to get these little things off. This seems awfully more stubborn than the last time I messed with it. I think the last time I just squeezed in the tabs from the outside and it just pulled out, but not sure. Why, thank you. Yes, I have a little Mac 84 button on my hat. I have those available. I need. I just need to figure out how to distribute them. I got a bunch of buttons from... Uh, a sticker mule. I ordered like a hundred of them. I have buttons to give to people and to, to sell and ship and for very low cost, of course. But your button your button purchase does help the channel. Mac Headroom, yes. Oh, come on. There's probably a stupid way of doing this that's very easy, and I, I am pushing in the center here. Let's let's turn on its side here. Let's see if that helps at all. Yay, buttons! Buttons for all! Yes, Brian, Brian, uh... Brian actually made it worth worth it for me to put extra buttons in my uh, travel bag. So we just happened to meet up, and I said, Oh, I got some buttons for you. Oh, come on. <laughs> this is the smallest little plastic thing. There we go. It just needed some force there. And the plastic thing rolled away. Yep, oh, there it is. There it is. Oh, well, thank you, Trina. I'm glad you are enjoying your buttons as well. 
A Mac Yak button would be cool. Yes. Unfortunately, for the buttons, you have to order like a stupid amount. <laughs> like a hundred of them. Uh, it's much cheaper to order a order hundred buttons than it is fifty buttons. Well, comes out to, you know, you know what I mean. You know what I'm trying to say. I'm sorry it's lagging. You saying that I can't really do anything about it. There's no buttons I could push. There's no cranks I could crank. So, sorry, again, the eighth time. <laughs> but that's how the internet works. Sometimes it lags. Sometimes it doesn't. Ah, come on. There we go. Jeez. Push the button. Wait, where's the... There we go. Yes. For, I'm sure most of you, very smart and intelligent viewers, are already subscribed to the Mac Yak channel. We do a, a live podcast every Thursday here on YouTube. I'm sure all of you are very smart and already subscribed to that channel. But... In the off chance, you, you, you know, you had a, a temporary uh, uh, lapse there. Don't worry. We are still accepting subscribers. Okay. Why? Why did they put this in this weird spot? <laughs> That's going to be a pain to get through. Mac Yak is the best yak. Yes, that is very true. So Bruce just put a, a link in there. That is to the Mac Gack podcast. We only stream once a week, so you're not going to be bombarded like notifications like you are from my channel. I mean, from other channels. Been there since the first episode. Well, thank you very much, Matthew. We have a super fan over here. Excellent. Excellent. All right, that one didn't come out too difficult. And of course, the <laughs> the last one to do is right there. But thankfully, I don't think we need to do those last two. But Bruce, I hope you are still here because that was all for you, buddy. And we're going to reveal uh, the analog board. Yay! At least that side of it. Let's see if I can hold that to one side. Maybe? There we go. There we go. So, Bruce... <laughs> Did you just want to see me, you know, cuss and get frustrated? Or <laughs> what was the purpose of you seeing the, the, the analog board here? I assume this is different because this is actually the U.S. model. Uh, and yours differs slightly. Look, just looking, looking just to the left of the speaker. Okay. Look at that. It's a lot of, a lot of stuff there. A lot of, a lot of, uh, solder, 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 solder. There we go. Now it's focused. Now it's out of focus again. Oh, isn't that lovely? Leakage! Uh-oh. Oh, yeah, I see. Oh, boy. Yeah, that's, there we go. <laughs> see, my, my video preview on the screen that I look at is very tiny. And, uh, yeah, there's, a. Uh, Let's see if this will focus. There, no, maybe. Yeah, there we go. We got some, some gunk here. Well, that's good. Oh, that's good. Mmm. 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 Well, that's gonna, that's gonna need some attention. There is a uh, analog board recapping in my future. Oh boy, that was. Looking forward to not having to do one of those anytime soon. Ew. Scunge. Scunge and grunge everywhere. Everywhere. Now, which which cap is that? That's... Oh, those... Oh, that looks like fun. <laughs> that's going to be... That's right in that area there. Past the transformer there. That's going to be fun to do. That's going to be very, very fun to do. Well, we're just gonna throw this computer away then, because I'm I'm not we're not doing that. <laughs> no, 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 no. 
No, no, we're not, we're not gonna go ahead ripping out the analog board on this one. But what we will do is make a note of our discoveries. So uh, a month or so from now, I'm like, oh, this, this machine doesn't look too bad. And I plug it in and it blows up in my face. We will avoid that, hopefully. So let's write down a classic. It is August 9th. I keep forgetting. Okay, battery removed. All right, so um, what uh, the, the other problem there was the uh, analog cable has some corrosion on it as well as the logic board. Okay, and then the analog board itself to the left of the speaker has some suspectable things. Needs attention. Anybody could read that, you get a nickel. <laughs> All right, so we're going to put this back. Didn't blow up, so that's good. Uh, I think I'm just going to keep all these clips in a bag. I'm not going to bother putting those back on. I will put the screws back on. Actually, you know what? These weren't too bad. We'll, we'll Put them back in because I will lose them. I know my. I will. I will definitely lose them. And then I'll. I'll go back to the stream and go. Where did I put them? Where did I put them? <laughs> Throw it at your place. You'll work on it. Can you get a button? <laughs> If you email me, so for, so I have not set up like a store or anything for buttons, but I know a lot of you are interested in buttons. So how I, I'm basically working on it now is if you email me and you are interested in a button, we could exchange details of how you can acquire a button. So if you want to email me at mac84tv at gmail.com. Again, that's mac84tv at gmail.com. If you really want a button, message me. We will work out some details. Uh, if you are a patron and you donate a certain amount to the channel uh, over a certain period of time, you do get a button. So that's another way to get a button. Button, button, button. That's a fun word to say. Button, button, button. All right, so we're going to slide this board back in. Easier said than done. All right, there we go. Oh, come on. There. All right. I'm not going to bother connecting that dodgy analog cable. Uh, I've done it before. Where's that screwdriver? For four hours. We're only an hour and 25 minutes in, so we're good. 32 viewers. Still 32 of you hanging on. Thank you. All right. All right. All right. So. Oops. All right. So we are going to put the case back on here. And, oh, we got, uh, got some plastic in here. What is this? It's like hot glue. So there's some hot glue in the bottom of the case here. Huh. Well. That's that's not staying there. That's getting thrown out. The collector's glue. That's collector's glue. He threw out the collector's glue. Alright. Alright, let's not spam the chat there. The moderators get very angry. They will put you in a timeout. My hands are busy, so they, they just like to assume things. All right. Uh, I did not actually touch those power books since. That is something I want to I want to look into again. Uh, the squealing power books. I need to find a, a good known power adapter, and I probably need to take apart that that uh, the power book that was squealing, the thirty four hundred. Take that apart. Sell me the collector's glue. 
The bidding starts at a thousand dollars. You still want? <laughs> I'm just loosely putting these screws back in. We'll put the sticker on before I lose the sticker. There we go. Let me know we looked at this one before. Power book. I think uh, Dana had a similar issue with his power book. I don't think it was the PRAM as much as it was uh, the, um, whatchamacallit, the um, power management chip or whatever the heck. Unit, chipset, whatever the heck it is. Take your money, gladly. Go to paypal.com slash Mac84TV, I think. <laughs> but go to patreon.com slash mac 84 I will gladly take your money. Oh, yes. I need to recap my PowerBook Duos. Eep. Thanks for reminding me, Brian. That's just, that's just a laundry list of stuff I got to recap. Greetings, programs. Welcome to the entertainment. I don't know why I'm talking like that. Hello, Orlando. Welcome to the chat. All right. Which way did this go on? The uh, This way. All right. So this was a Macintosh SE. Ah. There we go. And, uh, yeah, this is going to need some work. So we opened this up and we discovered that the battery was okay, but a pin on the analog board cable was all green and disgusting and rotted. And then the analog board had some rotted goo uh, on the side of it as well. So, yeah, it's going to be a fun repair for another day, but... It is properly labeled, so we will know that we cracked this open already. I'm going to go get another Mac, but I need your help. I need your help, audience. I need your help. What Mac should I grab? What Mac should I grab? This is a classic, Ken. This is a beautiful classic. You can notice because it doesn't have the fins on it. Welcome to the chat, Ken. Welcome to the stream. It's a beautiful classic, but you guys can help me out. So, I have a few more Macs I could grab off the shelf. What do you want me to grab? Either a Plus, or an SE, or another Classic. Plus, SE, or Classic. Let's see Let's see you vote in the chat. Let's see, we have 30 of you here, so I expect a, a, com a competition here. So we already, we already saw an SE, we already saw a Classic. So Bruce says a very enthusiastic Plus! Another Plus. A lot of votes for a Plus. I think plus plus is currently winning. Well, plus is definitely one at this point. Well, I guess I have to go grab the plus now, don't I? <laughs> hey, Dale. They're all the same computer. They look similar. Inside is a little bit different. Because pluses are the best. All right. Well, let me adjust the camera here so I could back up a little bit. Uh, what I will do is I will go put this back, and I will go grab a Macintosh Plus. How about that? So let me put my little Be Right Back thing on here. I will be right back, and I will go grab a Macintosh Plus off the shelf.
All right, we are back. Catching up on the chat here. Oh, thank you, Ken. I do like my little be right back screen with my little Apple TGS there. Thank you. All right. <laughs> so we we have uh, ah, Macintosh Plus here. There's one. But wait, there's more. We have a twin brother. So th this looks like a Photoshop that Dana would do. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> dual screen uh, Macintosh Pluses here. This one is a little bit less yellow than this one here. Um, this one says no disc, $120. So this one I believe works. Uh, this one says uh, May 7th, 2020, power issue. So I don't think this one turns on. But we can at least turn this one on. I think that'll work. Double plus. You got two pluses there. That's like four pluses, man. All right, so let's take a look at this one real quick. All right, so we have the battery recover has been removed from this one. So the battery is just hanging out there. That's okay. We could get rid of that. There is some uh, juicy corrosive bits there I could see. Oh, come on. It's just just a little bit just a little bit of corrosion there this is not a standard double-a battery a lot of people think oh it's just a double-a a battery this is a uh, what's the number on here it's an alkaline battery uh, 4.5 volts battery number five two three so yeah definitely not a double-a battery uh, and that is gonna be probably tossed out but, uh, yeah, the, the other one does look a little bit cleaner, but apparently it has uh, some power issues. But uh, let's see if we can, I, I keep saying but a lot, but, 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 let's see if we can at least clean this one up just a little bit. Ugh. Yeah, there's, there's definitely, we'll take a look here, there's definitely some corrosion there on the top battery pad. You can see right here. It's not as shiny. Ugh. Now, I only uh, actually bring my batteries to a specialized place where they actually recycle them. It's harder to find. My old library used to have a spot where you used to place the batteries, but a lot of places don't anymore. Yeah, so that's that's gonna need some cleaning. Oh, uh, good night, Sean. Thank you for joining. All right, so let's put this back up here. All right, so this one should work. Now, the Macintosh Plus uses a different port for the keyboard and the mouse. So let's see if I have a keyboard or a mouse hanging around here that I could use. Unfortunately. I did not pick up any keyboards or mice from the e-waste place. There was one set, and the person that worked there grabbed them, rightly so, because they picked up their own Macintosh Plus. So can't be mad at them for that, but uh, there is a shortage of uh, Macintosh Plus mice in the world, and uh, I am not, uh, I am not uh, one to be spared from that shortage. Uh, here's one over here. Let me grab one. So at least we could plug it in. That's what the mouse looks like. Has a very satisfying click. That's some ASMR goodness for you there. And we got our DB9 connector here. Now, I do have a full set of discs for the Macintosh Plus. I have no idea where they are, which is great. However, there is a SCSI port here, so we can use our SCSI 2SD adapter, provided I remember where I put it about 30 minutes ago. There it is. All right, cool. So, now there is a trick to the Macintosh Plus and getting it to work with one of these SCSI 2SD adapters. Uh, depending on the revision of the Macintosh Plus, either it'll work easily or you'll have to fiddle with it. So let's see what happens. 
I have no idea. Never turned this one on before. I don't know what revision it is. It does have a date of 1988 on the back, so I'm going to assume it's the later revision model. So the the uh, the serial connectors are actually the uh, smaller uh, variants on the Plus. It was the first Macintosh with the smaller serial ports, but the mouse uh, port is a 9 dB connector. Looks like a serial port, but uh, like the ones on the 512K, but it is not. It's a it's the same port like the 512K had, which is the uh, a, a dedicated mouse port. All right, so let's get our mouse pad here. Let's get this all sorted here. Yeah, so I will I will tell you the trick. At least at least it worked for me. Now, at least it worked for me. Um, so for the and I'll, I'll explain this a bit before I try it. So for the Macintosh Plus, in my experience, at least on the later revision, which is the only one I've tested this on so far, if you turn the Plus on and then you plug in the SCSI 2 SD adapter, it'll work. If you turn the Plus on with the SCSI 2 SD adapter plugged in, it won't work. So I'm going to eject the SD card from the SCSI 2 SD adapter. I think I might have to power it externally, but let's just see. Let me turn the machine on first. Let's see what happens. Oh, that was a... That was a, a sad whine. That was like a... That wasn't a... That was like a meow. Ooh, we got no screen. Well, I'm glad... Oh, there we go. Ooh! We got... Uh, we got a bit of a problem there. We got a... Uh, vertical line through the flashing question mark. That ain't good. That ain't good at all. That's a very weird noise. Let's try that again. Yeah, that's um. Oops. <laughs> I am very glad that uh, one hundred twenty dollars were not spent on this by some individual that had no idea what they were purchasing because this little guy definitely needs some work. Yeah, we're gonna do that, Bruce. That might be the ticket here. All right, so let's let's put this back up here because we should be seeing a gray screen, and we're not. It meows. It's like beep. Yeah, it should be that gray pattern on the back. It should not be a solid black pattern. It's definitely something weird there. I hope that weird startup chime was loud and clear because very weird. That's a first. It's a first for me. For those of you who missed that weird startup chime, we will do it one more time. Uh, this microscope is in the way of my microphone, but let's bring that closer ah, without dropping it. Where's the speaker on this thing? Speaker on the front, the left, the right. Somebody help me out here. I want I want to ASMR the heck out of this weird meow bonging noise. I should do that, should I? Where's my phone? Here's my phone. Okay, let's uh, left side, left side, left side. Okay, left, left, left. All right, I'm doing an audio recording on my phone, and I will plug the microphone in, uh, place the microphone rather into that side as well. Left is right. <laughs> Thankfully, this cable is long enough. All right. Let's hope this doesn't blow up, but listen for the meow, folks. That's a very, very sad noise. One last time here. Very weird. Very, very weird. I've never heard one like that before. So that's a first. That's a first for everything. Right. 
who knows? Who knows? I'm going to rename this recording so I know what the heck I, I did here. Mac plus weird startup meow. Meow. It almost sounds like a cat, kind of, if you're tone deaf like I am. All right. Unplug this before we damage it further. Now this one does have another screw here by the battery port. So undo that. Yeah, so Bruce's guess is that we could uh, reset the RAM, reseat it, and uh, that might work for us. So let's see. Why the 84 and the 80 in Mac 84? Well, 1984 was when the first Macintosh was released. So I thought it was only fitting that Mac 84 is an 84 plus sort of has a nice ring to it, I thought at least. <laughs> yes, it is a little concerning when whenever I bring up something to Bruce and go, have you ever heard of this before? And he's like, well, that's a new one. And I'm like, ah, crap. Great. I'm on my own here. <laughs> No, I was I was not released in '84. I was released a little bit after, just a little bit. All right, I already answered that question, buddy. If you're gonna spam the chat, don't do that, please. All right, there we go. Nope. One last one stuck in there. Close, but no cigar, Nick. And I'm not going to actually tell you guys the exact year I was born, because I'm sure some folks are just trying to find where I am so they could take all the Macs in my garage. <laughs> I'm half joking. All right. Got, got all that out of there. Now... Let's see what secrets this thing has inside. What 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 a hundred and twenty dollars would have bought you from the e-waste place if some crazy individual like me didn't make a bulk offer on the entire lot? Oh, this is uh pretty stiff. Oh. All right, this is a uh, this is gonna be a fun one, I could tell. The case is in pretty nice shape. You know, there's a few scratches and dings. Nothing too horrible. I was not around in 84. Uh, that was going to be fun. It was going to be a fun one. All right, let's stand up. We have to we have to hug it out. We're going to hug you. No. Oh, there we go. See, hugging your Mac always helps it. Looks pretty clean inside, honestly. Uh, let's see what we can find out here. What's going on? Why don't you want to boot? Now that analog board looks pretty good I must say look at look at that analog board I'm not seeing too much trouble on it I mean that transformer always looks like it's it's caked in goop but the board itself is pretty spotless there's not a lot of dust on there and this thing doesn't even have a fan in it so very nice and tidy so the floppy drive here, um, yeah, we, uh, let's see if there's any markings on the CRT that'll tell us what brand it is. No, I don't see any. I love that vintage Apple computer text that is right there in the center of your screen there. <laughs> you just hugged your G3. Very nice. Uh, I've not recapped any power books yet. No, I will have to. I just have not done that yet. All right. So, um, First things first, remove this, also very clean, 
and you know, nothing too bad on the on the bottom here. Now this has been opened before. This has been opened before, and I will show you how I how I how I've determined this. Right here, this has been bent quite a bit. It should look like that. This has been bent quite a bit, so either it was messed around with in the factory, but I have a better sense that uh, somebody had taken it apart. No, I don't think the e-waste people actually opened these up. They were just trying to sell them in bulk. But someone's been in here before. Maybe that's why in no boot, somebody put bad RAM in it. Who knows? Well, we're going to get to the bottom of this. Take the analog cable out. Take the floppy cable out. And there we go. All right, so let's see. Anything? Anything to? Oh, oh. Well, that's not gonna help. The label fell off the ROM chip, and light just got in it. I hope that didn't erase itself. Oh, let's get some tape here. <laughs> Shoot. <laughs> Where'd the label go? <laughs> Who took that off? Oh boy, oh boy. That ain't good. I mean, I'm pretty sure you have to shine ultraviolet light or light for a long period of time or whatever, but... Ah, uh, you needs UV light. Yeah, UV light to replace. Well, either way, we're going to put a nice sticker over that. There we go. Nice happy sticker. So the other sticker is also falling off. Apple 1985, 1986 copyright. Uh, I am going to peel that off because it's just about to fall off there. And I'm going to put another sticker on it. Okay, there we go. And I'm just going to write the same number that was on this tag on there, which is 3, 4, 2, 0, oh, 3, 4, 1, C, 8, 7, 4, 7, Apple, 85, 86. And I can't even read that because the tip of this marker is pretty thick. But whatever. Whatever. Alright, so I will I will move this sticker. We'll put it on top of a little mini Mackie over here. Like a little hat. There you go. There you go, buddy. And um there's there's not really much dust on here. There's a very fine layer of dust, but looks okay to me. Um yeah, let's try and reseat these memory chips. Now, Bruce, does uh, do they have to be in a uh, particular set of pairs? Actually, I see right off the bat that these two rear RAM chips are not locked in. These two little clips are not exactly locking them in on the right side here. So that could very well be the issue. But I am going to take all of them off, and we will put them back on. And of course, these have plastic clips, which are always fun, because there's always a risk of that breaking. Yay! Uh, very gentle with the 30-plus-year-old plastic here. All right. Matching pairs it is. Okay, well, the two... The two memory modules I just took off do not match in uh, brand, but the last two I took off did. So it could very well be that these are not the same. Uh, da, 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 da. They might actually be. Who knows? Not sure. No, we won't be snapping that off. Are you crazy? I do have some memory sticks here that are labeled. Here's a one meg, and here's another one meg. So I know these are the same. Oh, 
don't see much dust in here, though. They, they, those look really clean, actually. Very clean. So, let's hope that uh, putting in new memory or memory of a, of a correct matching pair solves this issue. In fact, I'm going to actually put the memory that came on this, this unit in the back so I could remove the front ones if I have to. Not like. All right. Sorry, you can't really see that that well. Just putting memory in the slots. That's all. Nothing too exciting. Making sure the clips are are grasping it at both edges. Good evening, Oz Retro Comp. How are you? So they need to be matching pairs. So that is essentially like, if I have two 512k and two one meg that, that should be fine all right so this this i can't get over how clean this looks inside i mean again let's look from the back here this looks very clean and tidy i'm used to seeing these all dusty so hopefully this was just an issue with the loose memory or something but this machine overall looks pretty nice pretty clean all right so we're going to slide this board back in here put the big cord back in so someone's definitely been in here because there's a missing sticker and there was a maybe a memory upgrade who knows yes and that that reefa cap right there will need to be replaced uh, if I turn this on <laughs> we will not leave it on long I even see some stress some uh, stress fractures in that reefa cap also uh, no, the Mac Plus did not have an internal hard drive, so there was not there was not one in here, Trina. Um, I can see with my eye. I don't know if you guys could see. Right along here, there's some stress cracking here. Now I don't know if that's just the plastic casing of here, or not. But yeah, that's not good. That can't be lovely. That's a. Uh, that ain't cool. Three reefas. There, there's one. Where are the other two? One, we're going, we're going on a reefa hunt here. I see a small one next to it, to the right. Maybe that's it, I don't know. Yeah, they gotta go anyway. Well, hey, if it, if it goes, I'll, I'll be smelling all the horrible small smells and you'll be seeing it pop live on camera. Win, win. Oh, I see the two little ones above. Yes, so capacitor 33, 37, and 38 all have to go. Let's hope that um, they just hang on just a little, little bit longer. Uh, the SCSI 2SD version 5 is probably the only one you need for a vintage Mac. The version 6 has some faster technologies in there, but the Macintosh cannot really take advantage of that. I use the version 5.1. It works fine for me. All right, let's plug in that mouse again. Let's just see if uh, if we get any different chime noises. We get a sad meow, or if we oh, there go the tools. We get a sad meow, or if we get uh, anything else. Let's see, is that that speaker cable plugged in? Where's the speaker? Oh, the speaker's on the analog board. There's nothing There's nothing additional to plug in. All right, well, we, we replaced two memory uh, modules, and we reseeded all of them. Let's see if that makes a difference here. What do you guys think? All right, we're going to try it. All right, three, two, one. Hey, that's a, that's a good sounding chime there. There we go. And look at the screen. Good tip, Bruce. 
That did the trick. Very, very nice. Awesome. Awesome! That was a happy bong, too. None of that sad meowing bongs. Could do without that. Let's make sure we get to the question mark, though, after it counts its whopping maybe four megabytes of memory. Might take a little while. Yep, there we go. Cursor moves, question mark. Awesome. All right, let's turn this off. Plug in our SCSI to SD, and I could hopefully demonstrate how to boot one of these. So you noticed that it goes to the gray screen, then it goes black, then it goes to the question mark. Now, when it goes to the question mark, that's when you turn on your SCSI 2SD adapter. That's a very good tip, Bruce. Thank you. I did not know that. Very thankful for your expertise, sir. All right. Let's try that again. So I'm ejecting the SCSI 2SD SD card. We're going to turn this machine on. And as soon as this screen goes black, I'm going to plug in the SCSI 2SD card into the adapter. And it should boot off of it, hopefully. Hopefully. There's a few other SE Macs, yes. Because if uh, I think if you plug in the SCSI 2SD adapter and it's on in this state, it just goes to a sad Mac. All right, let's see. Uh, might not be getting enough power from the SCSI port, actually, because I'm not seeing any... No, no lights at all. So I might need to use the uh, the external power plug here on the SCSI 2SD adapter. Although, on my other Mac Plus, it worked without it. So that is curious. Well, let's see if we get a sad Mac. Nope, no light on the SCSI 2SD adapter, so I might need uh, might need that Molex connector thingy. Oh, look at that, I broke my uh, Dremel bit. Well, that was an old one anyway. That's what happens when you leave your Dremel in a place, and then you step on it when you have no power. Yeah, it is not happy. It is not happy. Let's see if we have any floppies in here. Let go with this. No. Uh, let me check that other floppy container, if I can find it. Wherefore art thou floppy container? Uh, hold on. Well, let's turn this off. We don't need that reefer cap going prematurely here. Uh, hold on. I had some. I know I had some. I was just looking at them the other day. I think they're over here. Yep, here we go. We got some discs. Boy, do we have some discs. Plenty of discs. Oh, that's right, Bruce. I always forget about USB powering it. Gee, Bruce, if you weren't here, I'd be in a whole heap of trouble on, wouldn't I? Thankfully, I do have a micro USB plug that my wireless charger for my phone has. So there's always one plugged in here. Ooh, I do have a I do have a SCSI to Ethernet adapter from Asante, and it's a beautiful thing. All right. Let's try this again. <laughs> hey, Alex, no worries. Thanks for joining. All right, so we have a Macintosh Plus that was giving us a weird question mark and a very sad boot up noise. And it turned out that the memory was just not seated correctly. So thanks to Brankus Creations, Bruce there had the suggestion to reseat the memory. That did the trick. Now it has a, a nice happy bong there. And uh, there we go. We got the question mark here. So let's plug in our SD card. And there we go. It's booting. Welcome to Macintosh. Now it's going to try and put everything into the RAM disk here. I don't know how much memory we have. I think we only, we might only have two megs. Let's see. 
This RAM Disk Plus utility is really cool. Let me uh, bring you guys in a bit closer. Oh, we have a total of four megabytes. How about that? So the other two uh, memory modules were one megabyte each. Total of four megs. Awesome. Hey, look, Bruce, Steve, and Bruce. Steve and Bruce. How about that? Sweet. All right. Well, we could see if Tetris runs. Oh, I don't have the keyboard plugged in. Oh, well. Oh, you know what? Cannon fodder will work with just a mouse. Boom. No, that's going too high. Oh, Larry and John are there. They're just not important enough. Because Steve and Bruce are the most important, right? <laughs> oh, boy. Nice crisp display, though. No, uh, no, no burn in here. Which is very nice. Yeah, that did do it. Good old cannon fodder. Nope, this one might do it. This one might do it. Nope, too high. <laughs> yes, Bruce does have that superpower. I'm, you know, I wish he would just attune it just a little bit more. Because I have that Quadra 840 AV that that is just begging for some attention from a professional, not uh, not not a, a silly guy like me. Oh, I raised the elevation, didn't I? Well, that's not going to help. Got to wait for the ball to go off the screen. All right. Well, I've had enough of that. But this is a very nice Mac Plus. If, if it was $120 and I had to open it up to fix it, I, I would not be as happy. But uh, granted, I got this for, what, $13, $14? It's cool to me. All right, so let's shut this down. I'm going to put the other memory back in. I'm just curious if that memory was a matching pair or not. Let's see. Let's see. All right, let's catch up on the chat here. Oh. <laughs> this mouse is not going to work. Okay. Uh, Apache Thunder paid 75 for Mac SE. Came with a Santa Ethernet card. Very cool. But you traded it. But that's all right. We always have regrets. Uh, da, 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 da. So many wires. So many tools. Yes, there's, this, there's a lot of stuff. I got it clean. The power was out for a while, and that was the... I was really pumped to clean. I'm like, you know, I'm going to clean my room, my, my office, and I'm going to clean down here. And none of that happened, obviously. Obviously. I mean, I don't think it would be too interesting for me to just clean up and do a stream, because that's probably boring. But some of you might be like, what are you talking about? That would be amazing. I want to watch you clean up. <laughs> I said that maybe a little bit too enthusiastically. Just a little bit. Uh, on the monitor to the left, that is running Mavericks. All right, so we are going to swap the memory again. No, oh, it would help. Ugh. It would help if I remove these cables here. But that's good to know that the ROMs are in good condition. Oh, that'll be fun, Oz Retro Cup. There you go. What did you miss? Well, you missed a lot. We opened up an SE, we opened up a Classic, and now we open up this Plus here. But you could always rewind. That's the, the wonders of doing a live stream there. If uh, you have to go to bed or you miss something. 
it'll be here for when you get back. And again, this plus is in amazingly clean condition. I mean, even though someone's opened this up before, this is a very clean little plus. So I'm removing my one megabyte modules here that I put in. And these modules were, are not matching in brand, but maybe they'll still work. Who knows? Good progress. Yes. I would say, would say we made some good progress. All right. So let's put this board back in. Hopefully the memory it came with is good because I don't have too many spare memory modules sitting around here. Oopsie. You want to perform a... Ah, yes, the performers are nice. Some of them are better than others. Have I ever done a G4 upgrade to an iMac G3? No, I have not. The iMac G3 runs hot as it is. I mean, yeah, it's cool to have for bragging rights. I would not dream of putting a G4 in that thing. No, thank you. I have plenty of G4 towers and IMAX that uh, that uh, I think I'll, I'll just leave as is. It's going too well. Thanks for jinxing me there, Orlando. I greatly appreciate it. <laughs> oh, a tray loader. Yeah, the tray loaders are good, but... I, so for my trail loader, I have a, uh, a Voodoo 2 card that I put in. It works great. I'm doing a video on that. Uh, that graphics card is very sought after. It plugs into the mezzanine slot. Let's fix this little bent piece of metal here while we're here. My pliers are over here on the other side of the room. Hello, Mr. McIntosh. Stop for, thank you for dropping by. Yeah, most of the performers are bleh. Unless it's like an LC3 that's been rebranded as a Performa or a McIntosh Color Classic or something like that. Power PC ones are okay. Some most of them. Ah, yes, nothing like messing around with some vintage Max. Sunday night. Alright, so bending this piece of metal back from the horrible person who did not put that back after bending it probably 30 years ago. <laughs> Just a cosmetic thing, it's not a big deal. Okay, so what do you guys think? Let's see if this will uh if this will spring to life. Hopefully those uh memory modules that came with it are okay. Oh, yeah. The, well, I feel for you there. Yeah. Recapping some of these computers, you, you will singe your fingers. Oh, nice. That's that's nice when you find an iMac that comes with uh, the original keyboard and mouse. I thought I had all the colors. I was missing a strawberry keyboard, and I, I thankfully I just got one off eBay. It was a little pricier than I would have liked to pay for it. But I got it, so it was, it was all right. All right, so let's uh, let the scuzzy plug go. There it is. I'm always I'm always moving things to the side. Always, always, always. All right, let's plug this scuzzy cable back in. Scuzz, scuzzy, scuzzy, scuzzy. It's a fun word to say. Scuzzy, scuzzy. All right. Yeah, the IMAX are great, but when you have uh, a lot of them, they start to take up a, a good amount of space. <laughs> is this is this USB C? Is this USB micro cable actually going in, or did I break my SCSI to a C adapter? No, I think that's okay. All right, hopefully. All right, let's see what we get. No, no, we get the same, we get the same whining, meowing noise. Yeah, so I, I think that the, the memory module uh, must be faulty or it's not the right speed or something. Yeah, 
All right. Well, now we can make a note of that at least. At least one of the modules is bad. Maybe it's not a good matching pair or something like that. Uh, the only PC that I picked up was an IBM PS2. And Brian picked up a whole slew of cool Atari and Commodore stuff there. I think a VIC-20 maybe also? I, I forget. But uh, I'm glad I didn't pick up that stuff because I don't have room in the car. <laughs> Brian can attest to how packed that car was that day. Yes, Bruce, it's the same one. So I put the original memory back in and it made the sad meow. So uh, I think it's one of those memory modules is, is not playing nice in there. You did not miss any gore. There's no, what is this, a Ruck Hay Mods video? No, there's no, there's no blood or gore here. Oh, thank you very much, Bobby. I appreciate it. I'm working on some very cool videos that I hope to be released soon, some scripted videos. Uh, there's a preview on my Patreon of the Macintosh Clones video part one I'm working on. Very excited to keep working on that. Hopefully have that out fairly soon. All right, so Brian picked up two VIC-20s, two Commodore 64s, an SX-64, and some Ataris, and a ton of old PC laptops, which was really cool, because they were just they just wanted those gone, and uh, I think Brian got a pretty good price on those. And the analog cable here is kind of kind of stuck. Come on, let me get that out. There we go. Okay, so again, very clean. Uh, I think those memory modules are suspect. So I will be removing those. I think all four of these slots have to be filled. Let's see if I have something small, like 256 or something like that. Those are two megabytes. Something that I won't mind leaving in this machine. These are the rest of the one megabyte sims. So we want to, where'd, where'd I put those? There they are. Let's go back here. Uh, let's see. Oh, those are the same ones I took out before. Well, I'll just make a note that uh, the memory modules have to be uh, inspected. Uh, let me see if I have any of that paper left that was a sticker. Where'd it go? Did it fall down? Yes. Yes, it did. We will cut more of this one off. Just right on this one. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I'm not going to mess around with too much of the memory now, but... Uh, yeah. Oh, wait. Look at this. There's a resistor that has come loose, Bruce. Huh. Well, that might have something to do with it. I don't know if that happened just now or when, but look at that. Well, hanging off there. That should not be hanging off like that. Oopsie. So maybe somebody cut that. It definitely looks like somebody cut that. So yes, all right, that's on purpose. Okay. Alright, well, we'll take a picture of that just for... Yes, so the story of the tray loading IMAX is that there is... Yes, Orlando called it. Thank you for the bad luck. <laughs> for the tray loading IMAX, there is a port. In fact, I think I have a logic board here. Maybe? Maybe? Uh, that's, that's the other side of the basement. The logic board on the iMac tray loading actually has a floppy connector and an ADB connector on there. Now you could actually get the floppy connector to work, but since the ROM is uh, loaded from the system, uh, I think you need uh, system 8.1 to get that to work. There's, there's a very tricky version of the OS to get that to work, but it, it will work. Ah, okay, thank you, Bruce. That makes a lot of sense. 
Sorry, I'm, I'm losing some of the chat here. Let me scroll back up. Yeah, when when Brian saw that Commodore, I admit I was I was the Commodore all in one was interesting, but I'm like, look, I don't I don't I have a Commodore 64. I don't really need much else. <laughs> so I was like, let me stick to the Mac stuff. Ah, right, good night, Yannick. Sorry, must have missed you. Probably in bed already. Uh, well, I have, I have, uh, well, some people, I believe, tested it. Um, I have a version of Mac OS 8 that did come with two disk tool disks. So at least disk tools will work. Okay, yeah, I think this is actually, believe it or not, I think this is actually the first plus I ever opened. I've opened, I've opened a uh, 512K, I've opened a 128. I think this is the first plus I opened, because because the, the first working plus I've had in a while has been sitting in that corner not not there uh, there and that's in very good condition even though there's a pile of crap on top of it so I have not had need to open that up or maybe I did and I, I'm just misremembering I don't know I'm crazy um yeah all right so let's put this board back in with the faulty memory I will just put a sticker that's what I was gonna do see now I'm remembering I'm gonna put a sticker on the memory so I know exactly what is going on with this machine No pain, no gain. All right. But it's good to know that the screen is very sharp and crisp and that the analog board works. We just have to replace those awful Rifa caps. Do floppy disks just stop working? Mine won't work anymore. Yeah, there's a gear on some of them that they could go bad. And, uh, yeah. Uh, I use leaded solder when I fix up these computers. That was on a suggestion from Bruce. And, uh, if he suggests it, I, uh, am, uh, more than likely to follow it. He has much more experience in fixing these machines than I do. He probably has a much better explanation for I do and why to do that. And do we see the manufacturer on the CRT? No, it's upside down. I can't read that. Oh, I keep dropping things today. Ah. Sorry, uh, do floppy... Oh, the floppy disks stop working. I'm sorry, I thought you meant the disk drive. Um, yeah, disks can stop working. There's a little... There's a little film, um, a... Um, like a cloth type thing that's supposed to clean things, but look, it, it could be demagnetized. You could just have a, a drive that just scrapes across that with the header and just destroys things. I mean, there's there's a number of things that could go wrong on a disk, unfortunately. Because I, I have some disks I'd like to recover that are just in bad shape. All right, so this is uh, going to be uh, packed up now, and we'll open up the other one. Wait, wait, wait. We do have... I always forget these things. And then I find them afterwards and I go, what the hell is this? There we go. All right. Very good condition overall, this Plus. I must say I'm, I'm happily, happily surprised with this one. We have what looks like a leaf or a flower petal <laughs> that was in the fin of this. Throw that out. Okay.
Now I'm not going to put all these screws in like 100% because I want to be able to take this part easily next time, but I will thread them in a little bit. Just enough so it doesn't fall apart when I go to grab it. Sorry, I keep putting the camera way too down. You're seeing my knees. You don't need to see my knees. No reason to see my knees. Well, I'm sorry. Uh, everything looks green on my end. YouTube says I have an excellent connection. So, it ain't me. It could just be a local thing. Or YouTube could be lying to me and my connection's like a dial-up modem right now. I can't tell. I'm not using the interwebs to notice anything right now, so apologies. But uh, when in doubt, blame YouTube. That's <laughs> Demonetized instantly. Yeah, I mean, I have 2.9% dropped frames on OBS here. Uh, it may be the computer, maybe YouTube, who knows. But uh, my CPU is sitting at about 20%. Oh, we got red, and then orange, and then green again. I have no idea what's going on, but sorry. It's green again, so who... I start streaming with the VHS camcorder. Maybe that'll help. It's standard definition. Everything's blurry. Yeah, that's the way God intended. All right. Let's, let's put a sticker on this thing so we don't forget. I have vents here, so I don't want to put the sticker over the vents, but let's put that on the back there. These are easy to peel off, so not too worried. But all right, uh, this is the ninth. That's right. Okay. All right, so we have a little note on here, so I don't forget. Uh, <laughs> I have dial-up. We have dual ISDN connection here. All right, let's... Uh... Oh, yeah, uh, looking for memory for these old machines is not exactly a, a cheap thing to do. All right, so we're at the two hour and 30 minute mark. Oh, oh Brian. That would be cool. I'll go over your house. We'll do a stream. And then if it still buffers, I give up. <laughs> All right, so this is the other plus that says it doesn't power on. And this is very dusty. Blech. Blech. No, thank you. And we have another battery in there that is begging to be removed. Let's see if we could get that out there. Out of there. This one has not corroded. How about that?
Ooh, you neck the tubes. Ouch. Yeah, well, look, we all make mistakes. I, I have made some blunders in my time, but they weren't live streamed, so that's okay. Nobody knows about that. <laughs> all right, so this machine has a, a sticker on it that says Power Issue. Power Issue. I'm not going to turn it on right away. I'm going to open it up. <laughs> I'm curious. So someone has opened this up before because we have two screws missing on the top. We have a black screw here and two silver screws here. These two silver screws should be on top and this black screw should be there and then we're, we're missing two other screws. Someone has been in here before. But we don't blindly turn on machines. On the curb, I would have, I would have stopped the car I was in, turned around, and grabbed that. Woo! A two SI and a monitor and a printer. Well, if that was an image writer, there would have been, uh, would have been some tire marks there. You know, I, I've, I've heard a lot about dank pods. I have not seen that. YouTube channel. I believe they're dedicated to iPods. The guy got super popular super quick. Not that I'm jealous or anything. All right. I'm sure the guy does some, some good stuff. Yeah, I, I ordered this off eBay maybe three or four or five plus years ago. I only found it recently. <laughs> All right. This one's going to be stubborn, aren't, aren't you? Aren't you? Yeah, I just haven't watched his uh, channel. I probably will do that at some point. This is going to be a pain. I could just, uh, I could sense this one. Have you hugged your Macintosh Plus today? Oh. So, this one is not really budging. Ah. Very cool. I will have to check him out. I just, I literally just uh, have not seen it. Well, I get, I get recommended a lot of channels to watch, and often I just forget. Ah, come on. Yes, that's what I used before. I used I used an extender. And I'll show you exactly what I used before, actually. I used one of these uh, cheapo $10 kits. And it has this extender. So I could plug that extender into there. Just enough to reach, usually. Not ideal, but... In a pinch. So we didn't test this one yet, Bruce, but the, the sticker says no power and the screws were put in incorrectly. So someone has opened this up before. I'm very curious what's inside. I don't want to plug it in before finding out. I'm not that adventurous. Nobody needs to see me scream like a little girl when reefer caps go off. Yeah, when I went to go get a gas can for the generator, they, I was in the tool section. I'm like, you know what? Let me pick up some cheapo tools so I can lose them all over again. Ah, oh, my, uh, my, my. This one is it's being a bit stubborn. All right, it's, it's coming along a little bit. It doesn't help that my back is now all of a sudden hurting. Ow. Ah. All right, the bottom is separated slightly. <laughs> Dollar reduce. <laughs> oh, I love it. Oh, jeez. 
must have tweaked something in my back or my neck, because... Ah, there we go. All right. That's a nice score. The 5200s aren't bad. All right, what do we got here? What do we got here? All right, so there's a piece of hair in here. Or is that, uh, is that just dirt? No, that's definitely somebody's hair. How did someone get their hair in the battery terminal? Huh. All right, well, we're throwing that in the trash. Ew. All right, well... Let's see. Uh, we have four four memory modules in here. Just taking a look at this, uh, the reefer caps are all intact. Should we turn this one on? Should we turn this one on? Edutainment. That's good. We got, got one yes to turn that on. All right, I'm just going to look at the board real quick. We will then we'll turn it on. Thankfully, this, this, this little machine makes it quite easy to get into. So someone's definitely been in here before. Do it. All right, we have we have four memory modules. Now it's interesting. This module and this module match, and then this module and this module match. Shouldn't they be in pairs though? Shouldn't they be in pairs? Shouldn't this and this be the same, not this and this, this and this? Maybe I'm just talking around my butt here, but... All right, well, this is a 1987 model Macintosh Plus. <sighs> really not a lot of dust on the board. That's good. Everything looks okay. There's no resistors cut. Wait, not there. Over here. No resistors cut over here. Uh, so... Might be a full one meg here then. I'm gonna I'm gonna reseat these chips. I'm not gonna remove them. I'm just gonna reseat them. Ah, okay, if it's a, that's right. If it's the same capacity, it shouldn't matter. I hate these plastic clips. Oh, come on. Ah, there we go. I was afraid. I thought I, I snapped that one off there. All right. Put these all back in. In the exact order that they were in. So if there's any issues, we could reorder them again. But, oh, that one. That one made a... A very crunchy noise. That one was hard to seat down. Huh. Okay, well, we will find out in a minute, Bruce, I guess. If these were 
one megabyte uh, modules and nobody cut that resistor, that could be the problem. I'm just curious to see what happens when we turn it on. And uh, no doubt we will be taking this board out of this uh, carriage again very, very shortly. Come on, go back in there. Really? I mean, I suppose maybe it could, but why would you want to? Why would you want to do such a horrible thing? There's a lot of crap and dust here, but not on the board itself. All right, so. Yes, the reefer cap on my Apple 2GS exploded. Let's hope this one doesn't. I'm not looking for that exciting of a stream. It is almost midnight here, and I have to get up early for work tomorrow, so this might be one of the last Macs we tinker with today. All right. Let's get that camera back in position. There we go. All right, so what do you guys think? I'm gonna plug this in. Do you think it's gonna turn on? Do you think it's gonna do the weird question mark thing that happened before? What do you guys think? Yes, no, maybe so? Hmm. Midnight on my East Coast. Well, I don't own it, but yes. <laughs> I don't know when your phone died, but uh, maybe. All right, let's turn this on and see what happens. All right, we get a, uh, a chime. No screen for now. Floppy drive making a noise. Let's try and eject. The brightness knob is not doing anything. So, hmm. Yeah, maybe there's something that needs to be replaced on the analog board. That could very well be the case. Seeing if I see anything suspect. But it does chime. Yes, we will cut that resistor. Can't hurt. Cannot hurt. It'd be funny if that was the thing. I don't think it would be a broken trace because there's no corrosion on the board. Now, uh, a cracked solder joint from aging solder, I could see. That is very much possible, especially on the analog board. So this 256 K bit resistor has to be cut. Is that correct, Bruce, my friend? This guy right here. The one that was cut on the other one. But, you know, I'm, I'm not saying that's, uh, there's not a broken trace. It just looks very clean to me. So. that's the one to cut so snippity snip snip all 
I need to get a new pair of snips. I'm trying to remember where I got these. Because the edge doesn't really snip anymore. Only, like, the middle. Hold on. That's going to do it. Well, that's just pitiful. I can't even cut the darn thing. Use my, uh, I'll just saw it, to, saw into it very gently with the razor blade. And I need to get a new pair of snips now. There we go. All right. Hello, Macintosh Librarian. We were just chatting about you about, oh, two hours and 15 minutes ago. We were showing off little Mackie here. Hello. Well, I could desolder it, but my soldering station is off. My niece has requested a Mackie, so. <laughs> my niece wants one for herself. Which means her sister wants it too. So you better get <laughs> to making them in bulk. <laughs> so those of you just joining, we have a Macintosh Plus here that boots up, but we don't have anything on the screen. <laughs> That'd be awesome. <laughs> I'll, I'll pay shipping gladly and 3D printing uh, materials. Um, let's see. Yeah, so we cut that resistor here because this had... This might have more memory than it uh, shipped with. And maybe that's why the screen is black. Who knows? We're about to find out. That certainly helped the other one. Although in the other one, we did get a question mark. So we did get something. Although this does chime. It could be a bad, a bad, uh, you know, cracked solder joint or something somewhere. Who knows? I would love to get a 3D printer, but it just seems like another rabbit hole to go down. But um, my brother has one, so thankfully uh, I could probably convince him to print out some stuff if I need anything. Although I'm sure he'll get tired of that fast. Okay. Who thinks that's going to solve it? I'm going to boot this up again. Who thinks cutting that resistor will solve our, our problem here? And this metal on the bottom of this just is scraping the heck out of my board here. The, the, the wooden board I have when I solder it, which is fine. That's why it's there. I do not, I, I have a laser writer uh, 360 select. And then I have a laser writer something or other. I have hope. All right. I like that optimism. Let's get our power plug here. Tap the analog board gently. Well, let's just turn it on first. Then we'll go get crazy. All right. Let's turn it on. All right. So we got a chime. Let's see if the floppy drive makes its noise. No noise from the floppy drive yet. No.
No. What do you mean, no? That should be a yes. All right, so no noise from the floppy drive. It got deader. How do we do that? How do we make it deader? Gently tap on it. Like with this, should I, should I poke it? Tippity tap on the analog board. Tap, tap, tap. Don't think that's doing nothing. I suspect we have a few things going on here. Hey, that battery powered NES I tried to make as a kid probably would have worked if I had the right amperage. Yeah, I'm going to, uh, we're going to inspect the side here just to see if I can see anything that's clearly broken with the solder joints there. Uh, that's if I could get most of these pegs out of there. Yeah, I don't like putting these tools right next to the flyback transformer. <laughs> Uh, well, those solder joints look okay, actually, but just to my eyes. Yeah. Yeah, you know what? Since I'm going to have to take this apart anyway, we're not going to dive too much into that right now. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to poke around with that until I discharge the CRT, and that'll be another day. So, all right, let's get that case back over here. Let's get the uh, little bit here too. Put that back on. I still have to build my screwdriver for discharging the CRT. Oh, good night, Scarlet, Scar uh, Scarlet Swordfish. Good night. I have to do that. I haven't done that yet. I have the alligator clip and I have the screwdriver and all that stuff. I just, I just not have not built it. nice and safe back inside of its case and uh, I will not put the two screws back on the top because it didn't come with any got 40 people watching hello everybody so this Macintosh plus for you those those just joining us in just joining into us, I should say. <laughs> I haven't discharged one yet, and I've opened up a bunch of these. I'm just very careful not to touch things, but I am clumsy, and I know I'm going to zap myself one of these days, so I should get into the practice of doing that. And for safety purposes, of course, you really want to do that. <laughs> what would Mackie say? He would say, where'd I put him? Ah! Where'd he go? He disappeared. Oh, there he is. Discharge your CRTs. It's very dangerous. Be careful. I know that's unauthorized use. Please don't sue me. All right, so let me put this plus back. Um, probably the last one we're going to look at. You guys have a choice. You have a choice of either a Macintosh SE or a Macintosh Classic, which which should be the last Mac of the night to look at, as my hands are full of dust and crud. Last Mac of the night, a Macintosh SE or a Macintosh Classic. So we already looked at both during this stream, but there's one more. SE, so SE, SE. Someone says another Classic. <laughs> that's that's funny yes I'll, I'll make sure to have uh, someone with the phone ready just in case 
Alright, well, you know what? We'll grab the SE first, but if we have time, maybe we'll catch a, a, a classic with some carnage inside. Alright, so let me put this... Oh, we didn't put a label on this. What am I doing? There's no label. Let me print out a label for this one. So we can catalog what's up with this. Alright, so this is... A Mac Dash Plus. Okay. And we have chimes, but no screen image. Um, clipped. 256k resistor for RAM. All right, we'll print that out. What do I use to catalog? Uh, currently, I'm making it up as I go. Uh, I'm just printing out these stickers, putting them on the back of the machine. I do have a list, a spreadsheet of the computers that I own. Eventually, I'll be doing barcodes, so I could just scan a machine or tag things and whatnot. But for now, these stickers work okay. I have a little sticker printer there. So that, that helps for the time being, but I will need something more sophisticated for... For, uh, for now, I'll be okay. Better than your scratch pad. Well, yeah, I guess so. All right, I will be right back. Let me uh, just grab another MacBook. Yes, the answer to how many machines I have is way too many. <laughs> and yes, it is a 2GS, even though this is a Mac channel, I like the 2GS. And I had a very nice photo of it, so I thought, you know what, why not make that the little loading screen. So, I was, I was sympathetic to you guys, I brought both the SE and the Classic. So, we have two. Yeah, there, there's a lot of compact Macs in this basement. <laughs> Oh boy, yeah. So we're, we'll we'll tackle the SE first, which has a lot of Velcro on the top and the sides. Uh, both of them say th there may be a recap required. So no comment, Greg. <laughs> of course, that answer is yes. <laughs> okay. Let's see what this one does, shall we? I'm curious to plug this one in, just because I, I like to live dangerously. Let's see what happens. Alright, no chime. We got a floppy drive that made some noise. 
And we got wiggly patterns. Look at those wiggly patterns. Bruce, help. Help. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, we got a cursor at least. <laughs> Alright, we do have a cursor. <laughs> Alright, poor little guy. <laughs> poor little guy. <laughs> You'll be okay. Yes, I, I must have my antenna not plugged in correctly. We're not picking up a strong enough signal. <laughs> oh boy, this is going to be fun inside, I can tell. Whack the, oh, whack the left side. Alright, alright, I'll plug her back in. Sorry, Mr. McIntosh. Bruce told me to hit you. He's a very violent person sometimes. I made it worse. I don't want to hit it that hard. I'm shaking the entire desk here. Nope. I think I'm starting my own blue blue man group knockoff. Well, it tried to eject a floppy. At least, uh, at least it's given the the floppy disk uh, thingy. So, how about that? All right. Well, let's take a look inside. Oh boy. Alright, Jay, you come over and you smack the machine. Guest guest appearance on Mac 84. Might as well open it up and take the battery out. And you thought the classic was gonna be more horrible inside. glad somebody likes my my stupid humor others told me YouTube is a very serious place and my laughing is uncalled for those types of people don't hang around anymore thankfully it's my show I could be as stupid as I want <laughs> I hope the battery didn't explode. If the battery exploded, this thing actually, you know, tries to boot. So that's impressive. Oh, this thing. There we go. That's one screw. One more to go. See, Orlando came here for the laugh. That's good. Besides, if my jokes fall flat, you have to give me a super chat. I think that's just the rules. <laughs> that's a lot of money I'm leaving on the floor. Well, that's good, Alex. Nice way to end a, a Sunday night. There we go. All right, screws are off. Let's see if this one wants to cooperate. Oh, yes. Actually, it's coming coming apart at the top and the bottom. There we go. That did not take any, any struggle at all, really. This thing is heavy, though. Oh, thank you, Bruce. Where's the microphone? Eep. Oh, that's that's not a goodie. Hold on. Ah. Eep! Oh, that probably hurt your ears there. Sorry. Thank you very much, Bruce, for the super chat. That is very kind of someone. Someone being Bruce there. And uh, I will take this time to plug Bruce's channel again. He does an excellent job. He's currently beating me in subscribers, but I don't care. Well deserved. 
No wonder this thing is so heavy. It has two floppy drives in here. But uh, Bruce also runs a very awesome website where he recaps smacks. And uh, he has excellent guides on there, which I follow. So if you are new to recapping Macintoshes, you can print out these handy PDF guides there. Bruce, feel free to, to promote your link in the chat there. And it'll tell you what capacitors need to be replaced and all that fun stuff. <laughs> all right, so let's take a look at this board here. We have a sticker that fell off one of the ROMs, or maybe it was a CRT, but it's, it's just sitting on top of the logic board there. Uh, looks like we have... Where's the battery? Where's the battery? Yep, the battery is intact. It's soldered to the board. <laughs> Bruce can recap a lot of things. I don't know if he necessarily wants to recap more Amigos, but I'll let him uh, answer that. There we go. There's Bruce's website link. Someone is knocking. Who's knocking? Hold on a second. Oh, I gotta run. Sorry, be right back.
Hey, I'm back. Sorry about that. Yeah, so um, I'm gonna have to to end it here. One of our bunnies isn't doing too well suddenly, so we're gonna have to attend to her. So apologies to ending this a little bit. Uh, one of the bunnies is acting a little strange, so uh, have to go attend to that. But um, we will get back to this another time. I assure you, it's not going anywhere. So uh, thank you for for watching. Uh, take care and. Uh, We'll see you in a little bit. Sorry I gotta abruptly run so quick, but um, gotta attend to more important things. So take care, uh, and uh, where's the end stream button? Over here, on the other screen. Sorry to abruptly cut this short, but especially with 36 of you watching, you're amazing. Check Twitter and Instagram, Mac84TV, all that good stuff. If you wanna support me on Patreon, go ahead, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Gotta go, take care.